find an orthogonal basis for R4 that contains the following vectors. So we have the vector v sub 1, which is 1, 4, negative 1, 0, and vector v sub 2, which is the vector with components 1, 0, 1, 2. So before we start looking for a basis for R4, let's begin by observing the relationship between these two given vectors. So let's recall that we know that two vectors are orthogonal to each other if their dot product is 0. So taking the dot product of our given vectors, we have vector v sub 1 dotted with vector v sub 2. So vector v sub 1 is the vector with components 1, 4, negative 1, 0. And we are dotting this with the vector with components 1, 0, 1, 2. So computing this dot product, we have 1 plus 0 minus 1 plus 0, which equals 0. Woohoo! So this allows us to conclude that vector v sub 1 and vector v sub 2 form an orthogonal set of vectors, which implies that vector v sub 1 and vector v sub 2 are linearly independent. So now we are officially ready to go ahead and form a basis for R4 containing vectors v sub 1 and vector v sub 2. So the nicest and most straightforward way to do this is to simply incorporate the elementary vectors. So we can say that a basis for R4 is the set of vectors, vector v sub 1, vector v sub 2, vector x sub 3, and vector x sub 4, where vector x sub 3 is the elementary vector 0, 0, 1, 0, and vector x sub 4 is the vector with components 0, 0, 0, 1. Now, how do we know that this is forming a basis for R4? Well, the easiest way for us to check is to simply put these vectors into an augmented matrix with the zero vector and row reduce. So here we go. Taking our first pivot position, we want to use that to eliminate the entries below it. So we can do minus four times the first row plus the second row and then we can simply add the first row to the third row, which is going to leave us with the row equivalent matrix, 1, 1, 0, 0. We have minus 4 plus 4 is 0. Negative 4 plus 0 is minus 4, 0, 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 plus 1 is 2. 0 plus 1 is 1. And 0 plus 0 is 0 and our fourth row remains as it is. So our first column is all set, and we move to our second pivot position, which we want to use to eliminate the entries below it. So we can do 1 half times the second row plus the third row, and we can also do 1 half times the second row plus the fourth row, which leaves us again with the row equivalent matrix First row remains as it is, 1, 1, 0, 0. Second row remains as it is, 0, negative 4, 0, 0. Our third row becomes 0, 0, 1, 0. And the fourth row becomes 0, 0, 0, 1. And would you look at this? We've attained echelon form. So we can see that, therefore, matrix A is a 4x4 four four matrix with a basic variable in each column, or in other words, four pivot columns, which is logically equivalent to saying that the columns of matrix A span R4, which is logically equivalent to saying that the columns of matrix A are linearly independent, which allows us to officially conclude that the set of vectors v sub 1, v sub 2, x sub 3, and x sub 4 is in fact a basis for R4. So now that we officially have this basis for R4, we're now ready to go ahead and apply the Gram-Schmidt process to orthogonalize this basis. So again, taking our basis for R4, we are now officially ready to apply the Gram-Schmidt process to orthogonalize this basis. Now what's really nice is that since we already know that vector v sub 1 and vector v sub 2 are orthogonal, 
This allows us to immediately start with vector x sub 3. So by the Gram-Schmidt process, we know that the next vector in this orthogonal basis, vector v sub 3, is going to be equal to vector x sub 3 minus the projection of vector x sub 3 onto vector v sub 1 minus the projection of vector x sub 3 onto vector v sub 2. So here we go. Let's find this vector v sub 3. So we have the given vector x sub 3 with the components 0, 0, 1, 0. And we want to compute all these dot products. So this is minus, and we have the dot product in the numerator leaves us with 0 plus 0 minus 1 plus 0. And that's all divided by 1 plus 16 plus 1 plus 0 multiplied by vector v sub 1 minus... So the dot product in the numerator of the second projection is 0 plus 0 plus 1 plus 0, all divided by 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 4. And this is multiplied by vector v sub 2. So looking at simplifying these dot products, for the first projection we have negative 1 by 18, and the second projection, projection we have 1 by 6. So this is equal to our original vector x sub 3, 0, 0, 1, 0, minus a minus 1 by 18, so that's going to be plus 1 over 18, and then substituting in the given vector v sub 1, we have 1, 4, negative 1, 0, and this will be minus the scalar multiple 1 6, multiplied by vector v sub 2, which is the vector with components 1, 0, 1, 2. So distributing these scalar multiples, this is leaving us with the vector v x sub 3, 0, 0, 1, 0, plus, so distributing 1 18th, we have the vector with components 1 by 18, 2 by 9, negative 1 by 18, 0, plus distributing that scalar multiple of negative 1 6 through, we have minus 1 6, 0, minus 1 6, and then minus 1 third. And combining up these like terms, we are left with the vector with components negative 1 ninth, 2 ninths, 7 ninths, and negative 1 third. So now that we have vector v sub 3, we are officially ready to find vector v sub 4. And we can recall that by the Gram-Schmidt process, vector v sub 4 is going to be equal to vector x sub 4 minus the projection of vector x sub 4 onto vector v sub 1, minus the projection of vector x sub 4 onto vector v sub 2, minus the projection of vector x sub 4 onto vector v sub 3. Oh, here we go. We have the vector 0, 0, 0, 1 minus the first projection. So in the numerator, we have the dot product 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. And that's all divided by, we have 1 plus 16 plus 1 plus 0. So this scalar is multiplied by vector v sub 1 minus the second projection. In the numerator, we have... 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 2, and this is all divided by 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 4, multiplied by the vector v sub 2, minus, so we have our third projection. So in the numerator, our dot product produces 0 plus 0 minus 1 third, and this is all divided by, we have 1 by 81 plus 4 by 81, plus 49 by 81, plus 1 ninth, and that's multiplied by vector v sub 3. So simplifying, looking at this first scalar multiple, we realize the numerator is 0, so this whole thing goes to 0. With the second projection, we are left with 2 in the numerator, 
and 6 in our denominator. With our third projection, we have this negative 1 third in the numerator. And combining up all those like terms and simplifying in the denominator, we are left with 7 ninths. So simplifying, this is equal to the vector with components 0, 0, 0, 1 minus 0 times vector v sub 1, so we can just ignore that. We then have negative 1 third multiplied by vector v sub 2, which is the vector with components 1, 0, 1, 2. And this is going to be minus, so we have negative 1 third multiplied by the reciprocal of the denominator multiplied by vector v sub 3. So this is equal to the vector 0, 0, 0, 1 plus the vector with components negative 1 third, 0, negative 1 third minus 2 thirds. And then this will be plus 3 sevenths multiplied by vector v sub 3, which is the vector with components negative 1 ninth, 2 ninths, 7 ninths, negative 1 third. And we need a little more room. So now combining up those like components, we are left with a vector v sub 4 being the vector with components negative 8 twenty-firsts, 2 twenty-firsts, 0, 4 twenty-firsts. So now that we have vector v sub 4, we are officially ready to state our final answer. And uh, we can say that by the Gram-Schmidt process, we have attained an orthogonal basis for our 4 containing the vectors 1, 4, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, negative 1 ninth, 2 ninth, 7 ninths, negative 1 third, and negative 8 twenty-firsts, 2 21sts, 0, 4 21sts, making this our beautiful final answer.